Okay, so um, we've managed to uh, get away without using much math so far. So uh, now let's see if we can define things a bit more mathematically and, and describe uh, some uh, simple harmonic motion in a more uh, rigorous way. So actually, I'm going to start with the easiest way of doing it. Well, what I consider to be the easiest way. Uh, so I'm not going to use any calculus to start with. And I'm just going to sort of cheat and take equations from circular motion that can be applied to simple harmonic motion um, if we use our imagination a little bit. So uh, if you imagine um, this red block going up and down, if we shine a light at it in this direction so that it casts a shadow uh, or the observer here sees it, um, they see this, uh, this dot going up and down. Now if you get a turntable with a green blob on it as well and you, s you set it so its time period is the same as the time period of the red block, right? The um, the green dot here and the green dot here are always together, right? They never get out of phase at all. Um, this is observably the case, right? It's a coincidence, but it's observably the case. So uh, we can use that to uh, steal the circular motion equations and use them for simple heart motion. So in circular motion, if we just consider the green ball doing its circular motion, um, its acceleration would be given by a equals v squared over r minus v squared over r, sorry. Um, and its instantaneous velocity at any point would be 2 pi r, which is the distance it travels in the time period, multiplied by f, which is 1 over t. So really we've just got 2 pi r over big T. So that's um, its instantaneous velocity at any moment in time. So uh, just to get the equations into the same format that um, are commonly used in the physics exams, if I sub uh, this equation into this, I get this. R and R here can cancel out, so one of the R squareds disappear. Uh, sorry, the squared from the R can disappear, and you're just left with R on its own. So what this term is actually telling me is the acceleration of the green ball at any point. So, for instance, here it's got a velocity um, pointing straight up. Here its velocity is pointing straight down. So there's a change in velocity, so it must be accelerating. That's circular motion. Now, if we consider the green ball still going in a circle. Uh, the component of the acceleration um, that in circular motion is directed towards the center of the circle along the radius that acts in the y-axis, that's, that's this axis, is the same as the acceleration of the pendulum. Right? So if I just freeze it and we look at <coughs> the green arrow is its actual acceleration, which would be this, <coughs> and um, this component, because I could split the green arrow up into two components, a vertical and a horizontal, um, the vertical component would be the same as the acceleration of the red uh, blocks acceleration um, and that would be given to me by r cos theta right so I could say take the acceleration the green line which is the same as the radius of the circle right um, which is given by this value and multiply it by r cos theta and I can have uh, the value for um, the acceleration of the red block now r cos theta is actually just x, right? It's the height along the displacement this way. Now, I know graphs normally go x, y, but since we're looking at this um, with displacement going this way, um, yeah, it's a bit odd, isn't it? But uh, it, it's, it seems confusing, but it's not, not a problem, really. You, you, we are actually just labeling this component here this axis here as x, even though normally on a graph x and y are this way around. So in x displacement in the vertical, we can get it. Um, sorry, we can get the acceleration um, by simply taking the um, the acceleration as though it were doing circular motion, and multiplying it by um, its displacement vertically or in the vertical, right? And that will give us the acceleration. So really, we've just managed to get a formula for the acceleration of something in simple harmonic motion. Uh, if we know its position using a, a geometric comparison. So what we've got here is two, we could really say we've got two equations. We've got an, an equation for acceleration given that we know its displacement from its equilibrium position. And we've also got um, something's maximum um, acceleration, which will be when its displacement is maximum or it's the displacement is equal to the amplitude. We can get a few more as well out of this. So um, if we are t seconds into an oscillation that takes big t seconds, then t over t 
is like kind of how far away through we are the how far through the oscillation we are so um, if we're 0.5 seconds into a two second oscillation we are 0.25 of the way through now if you've got your um, calculator set in radians etc uh, this would tell you how far along the one of the, the sine curve you are or cos curve right so um, since 2 pi is one rotation in radians the rotation in radians is t over big t times 2 pi and if you sub in the numbers for big t and little t or for for if you sub in, sorry, big T is 1 over F, you get the formula 2 pi FT, right? 2 pi FT is basically telling the formula how far along in the um, cycle you are. Um, so uh, you can get your displacement by taking the maximum displacement multiplied by cos of 2 pi FT. So that's what this tells you. It tells you what your displacement is if we know essentially uh, the time we are along and the frequency of the uh, oscillation okay so we've got that formula as well this is simply from circular motion it's just the the um, maximum velocity which again is the same as saying uh, 2 pi r over big T uh, it's the same thing okay so we've managed to get quite a few excel um, quite a few useful formulas without even having to look into um, calculus